Hi all, so in this video, we introduce the computation of the active barriers in three-dimensional flows, and we will be primarily focusing on active barriers to um, the diffusive, to the viscous or to the, to the diffusive transport of uh, linear momentum. The functions can be found here inside this active barriers. One, of course, can also consider the um, the not only the active barrier equation of linear momentum, but also the active barrier equations for the vorticity, for example. The theory in 2D and 3D is, is exactly the same. So in 2D and in 3D, the barrier, the active barrier equations for linear momentum are um, simply given by the Laplace of the velocity and um, the active barriers of the vorticity are given by the Laplace of the vorticity, of course. And one can visualize these structures by running the corresponding diagnostic on these active barrier equations as you already did in a 2D case. One can do this for the FTD, the PRA, the TRA, the TSE, and for all these, all these diagnostics. Um, let's check out, for example, the FTLE. So in the FTLE, you can find three, three demos, essentially. Um, so the first one is dedicated to extracting active barriers or visualizing active barriers using the FTLE field from the viscous ABC field, uh, ABC velocity data set. This script here visualizes active barriers on the FTLE field, through the FTLE field on channel flow from the John Hopkins turbulence database. And in this, um, in this script here, it's also channel flow from the John Hopkins turbulence database. However, it's a specific cross section, which was considered in um, one of, of, um, of the papers in our group. So actually, I will check out check out this um, this notebook here first because it essentially reproduces the results from um, from the from the major paper. So of course, all the initial statements are just import statements. Uh, you can find the data either if you go to the John Hopkins Turbulence database, then if you need to download the data and 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 do some pre processing, or alternatively, you can find the MAT file. Um, so this this momentum barrier mod file on um, uh, under this link. So you can see um, it's it's this mod file which I actually have already copy pasted into into our data folder. So it should be under turbulence, and then you can see there is this mod file. Since it's not too big, I can actually upload it also to GitHub. So you will find this mod file also on on GitHub immediately. And this mod file here essentially contains the Laplace of the of the velocity. So back to our main script, um, we will proceed by, of course, importing this data, define the parameters, define the domain. So basically we define a cross section over which we want to visualize these active, um, so over which we want to visualize these, these barriers. We interpolate, and here we do not interpolate the original velocity field, but we interpolate this Laplace of the velocity. So this is important. The velocity field at this point is actually completely irrelevant, we will not be considering the velocity field, will just be considering the Laplace of the velocity field. And then we can run trajectories on, 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 this, um, on this rescaled barrier equation and compute the FTD field on this rescaled barrier equation. Um, we can do this. So the first step is simply importing the data. This is done here. As you can see, the Laplace, this momentum barrier field contains um, these three arrays, which are simply the X component of the Laplace of the velocity with the Y component and the Z component. Here it is simply the time span. Then we define the computational parameters, so the number of cores, whether it is periodic or non-periodic. So here actually we set it, uh, the domain to be false in, in all cases because we do not consider, so of course the channel flow has some periodic boundary conditions. In fact, if you, if you check out, um, you can find more explanations on the channel flow if you click on this link. So here you can find several explanations of the channel flow, or alternatively, you can also go to the data folder and click on the notebook channel. And you can see that um, actually this channel flow is, uh, since the channel flow, of course, it has the Z in the Z direction, it has walls, or in the X and the Y direction, it is it has um, periodic um, boundary conditions. However, since we are not interested, so since we do not, we, we do not look at, at uh, since, since we just look at the reduced portion of this channel flow, 
the periodic boundary conditions for this reduced portion will of course be false, false, false. So we actually assume that the domain we're considering is sufficiently big that whenever we integrate trajectories for the system, we do not exit the domain. This is important to consider. So the, the integration interval for this for this, um, for, for when solving this ODE should not be too long because if it's too long, then of course trajectories would exit the domain that you that you actually have here, and the, the barriers will become insignificant. So you always need to make sure that the trajectories are inside inside this domain here, of course. Of course, we need to define auxiliary grid spacing because we need to compute the gradient of the flow map. We define a spatial temporal domain. So here we just simply define a cross section over which we want to compute and visualize these active barriers, the resolution of the mesh grid, which is very fine, as you can see, and also the dummy time interval. So we seek um, we seek to visualize transport barriers over, over these different time intervals. So these are actually multiple time intervals. You can see that as you increase the time intervals, of course, more and more structures tend to emerge. However, as I said, you cannot choose the time interval to be too high because then you risk the trajectories exit exit this domain specified specified here. Then we interpolate the Laplacian of the velocity field. This is, of course, it's a steady interpolation because the Laplacian is, of course, a steady velocity field because time, if we, if we go back here, time here is fixed. So there is no dependence on, on so there is no there is no explicit dependence on time here in this integration, but actually this S is simply dummy time variable. So it's not it's not the same as this T, of course. So when you integrate, you integrate with respect to the dummy time. If we scroll down, then we can simply compute the active FTLE. This is basically the same as computing the FTLE, but not on the original velocity field, but on the active barrier equations. So that's what we're doing here for this cross section. Of course, this is all parallelized. So here we simply arrange these initial conditions into a vector, put them into different batches, compute the FTLE field, and then here we simply reshape the FTLE field um, to a mesh grid of, of um, to an Y and Z and X mesh grid. And of course, since we decided to compute the FTLE field over three dummy time intervals, um, we also we also store these three dummy time intervals in this array here. So actually, if we want to compute now the FTD field over the first dummy time interval, so the smallest, you can see this, where you can see this, this pretty prominent ridge and this prominent ridge here. You can see indication of some kind of uh, elliptical flow feature here and here. If I increase this time interval again, these, these features become really prominent. So you can see there's a major ridge here. And these two vortices are also visible essentially in the FTD field. And I can keep increasing the time interval, and you can see just more and more structure emerge. Emerge. As I said, you cannot do this forever because at some point the trajectories will exit the domain. But this is no limitation of the algorithm. Simply, what you would need to do is you need to make sure that the domain that you have is sufficiently big. Now, due to computational reasons, I could not download the whole uh, turbulent channel flow because this would be computationally too expensive to store. So I just downloaded a portion of it. Um, I can also show results on the on the TRA. So let's let's see what happens if I run the actually what the TRA. If I run the TRA on the uniform momentum zones, again it's the same thing. Running it's the same as running the TRA on regular velocity field, but here we do not have the regular velocity field, but we simply have the Laplace of the velocity field. And the barriers that you get are barriers to the transport of linear momentum, actually to the to the diffusive transport of linear momentum, which is the objective component here. And um, of course, if you increase the time interval, then the tier A is better in highlighting the vortices. So you can see that one can actually design an algorithm then, which is essentially the same algorithm that we used in the 2D case for extracting um, vortices from the tier A. And you can see that you have these, these white lines indicate approximate vortex boundaries. To make sure that these are vortex boundaries, you can actually do a simulation in the sense that you can pick these boundaries and then um, launch from these boundaries. You can then, you can then launch the um, trajectories, but not physical particle trajectories, but trajectories from 
So trajectories from, let me scroll up, from this ODE, okay? And you can see that, these, that this ODE really shows that you get this nice tubular surfaces on this cross section. So the structures you get are really meaningful and you these tubular surfaces block the diffusive transport of uh, linear momentum. With that, of course, I could also show the scripts for um, the other notebooks. However, I will not go, um, so I can, I can, for example, show the script for the, let's see, for the, for the John Hopkins Sherblins database. The script is essentially the same. So it's really exactly the same. Um, the only, the only reason I distinguish them is that here you need to import. So the import statement is a bit different because here you, you basically need to, to go to the John Hopkins Sherblins database, download the data, and, and then you need to, so you need to go to the John Hopkins Sherman's database, download the data, which I mean, the, the snapshot one can download is for example, this one here, which is a tiny portion of the channel flow. You can download the data. And then of course, once you download the data, which is this channel.h5. So if you download data from the John Hopkins Sherman channel flow with this parameters, for example, then, um, it's, you can you can denote the file as channel.h5, and from the channel.h5, which just stores the velocity field, you can then actually compute by running the script here, which you can find in the data folder, you can then compute the Laplacian uh, of the velocity. So you can find all the scripts in the in the folder data. So if you go data turbulence, then you see this channel dot, um, this channel notebook uh, simply stores this data. I can unfortunately not upload this H5 file to GitHub because as you can see, it is way too big to be uploaded on GitHub. Um, hence, you would need to you would need to go to go to the John Hopkins uh, Turbulence Channel Flow. It's all very easy. So you just need to create a, a token, which they will very fastly give you. And once you have the token, you can simply download the data. And um, and once you have the velocity data, you need then to compute the Laplacian of the velocity. Once you've done that, then I have stored this Laplacian of the velocity field in this channel.mat file. And you can then simply input this and and sorry, and run, where is it? And run um, and visualize various to linear momentum on the John Hopkins turbulence database at arbitrary points and over arbitrary time intervals actually. This script here I showed you is was just um, so I chose the script because it shows the results from the from the from this paper. However, of course, one can also choose other regions um, to visualize uh, other regions of interest. Also, in case you're not you don't have the turbulence channel flow, but some other type of of channel flow or turbulence data set, then you can also make use of the script by simply changing changing um, the import statements here. With that, I thank you for your attention. And in case you have any questions, then just feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to help also with Zoom calls or with any other uh, possible mean of, uh, of help.